This video is going to be all about the DJI Action 3. I'm going to talk about specs, features, let you hear audio in different environments, show you footage in different environments with different settings, and just basically give you an all-round view of what the camera's like. Also, this video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. So I'm going to first talk about the design because the Action 2 was a bit of a controversial camera in the sense that a lot of people didn't like it and so DJI have gone back to the original design of the Action 1 which is more action-y looking. I think I'm about to walk past the school and it's going to be really noisy. Let's try and go this way. So yeah, original design of the Osmo Action 1. And the thing that I like about this is the fact that it's got not just a rear touchscreen, but also a front touchscreen. And it just makes it so useful when you're filming yourself, you don't have to flip the camera around and then fiddle around with your settings on the back of the camera you can just do it all on the front touch screen so that makes it really useful it's also waterproof to 16 meters and it's 30 meters with a case and um, the audio from what I have listened to previously in my tests sounds pretty good so the audio that you're hearing at the moment is coming straight from the camera microphones and I'm also filming in the normal color profile so normal color profile and this is what the footage is looking like So the other thing that I really love about the design is the fact that it comes with a cage that has a vertical side mount. So you can basically mount the camera horizontally or vertically and it's got a quick release system which means that you can buy these little magnetic mount adapters and you can just put them on anything. So you can put them on a tripod, you can put them on a mouth mount, you can put them on literally everything that you would want to mount your Action 3 to and you can just quickly clip it on, clip it off without having to faff around with unscrewing the screws that come with the normal action cameras. So in terms of the specs, it's 4K 120, 2.7K 120 and 1080 240. So you can shoot slow motion in 4K and 2.7K up to four times. And then with 1080, it's up to eight times. So in terms of the sensor size, it's got a 1 over 1.7 inch CMOS sensor, which is the same size as the Action 2, but bigger than the Action 1, which is a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. And the aperture is f2.8, so it shouldn't do too badly in low light. It would have been better if it was a slightly wider aperture to do even better in low light. If you compare the footage to the Action 2, it pretty much looks similar, I'm not going to lie. and it's basically because the camera seems to be a repackaged Action 2. So the body's different, but a lot of the internals and a lot of the specs are pretty much the same. But the footage looks good overall, and the footage that you're seeing now is in decently like. Previously it was in normal, so I just wanted to give you an idea of what the difference is between the two, and I will show you a little bit more of that later on. Drop my camera on the floor. Now, if that was my action too, I definitely would have been a bit more panicked thinking that I would have cracked the lens or something. So I'm actually okay with this one because this lens can also be replaced. That's something to note. Um, but my tripod's just broken, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, I didn't bring a spare one with me, annoyingly, but uh, gonna have to buy a new one now.
So as I mentioned, this video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound and I love including B-roll in my videos and I feel like adding music and sound effects just makes the B-roll a bit more engaging. So with Epidemic Sound, because they have over 35,000 music tracks and over 90,000 sound effects, it just makes it really easy to find the best music track or the sound effects that kind of fit the B-roll that I filmed. And to make it even easier to find more of the tracks that I've already discovered that I already like, there's a find similar feature. So you can find similar tracks to the ones that you've already listened to and the ones that you've already selected. So it makes it even easier to curate a soundtrack for your video. There's constantly new tracks being added every week, both music and sound effects. So it's all licensed music, all cleared, so you're not gonna get any copyright claims in your video. I've dropped a link in the description so you can sign up for a 30 day free trial so you can try it out. You can actually use the music in your videos during your trial, so that's really cool and you're not gonna get any copyright claims on that. So check it out and thanks again Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. So up until now, I've been switching between Decent e like and the normal color profile. So the Action 3 just has two color profiles. The normal color profile means that you don't have to do any color correcting or color grading. You can literally just start recording and the footage looks as it is and you can just use it straight out of the camera. Whereas with Decent e like then you have to color correct and color grade the footage for it to look normal. And the benefit of Decent like is the fact that you get a bit more dynamic range and then you also have more control over how your footage looks. So I love shooting in Decent like because I like to have that control. And when I got the Pocket 2, I created some Decent like LUTs because I was filming with Decent like all the time and I didn't want to have to faff around with color correcting, color grading the footage every single time. So the LUTs work with the Action 3, so I've dropped a link in the description to them. But this is the difference between decent you like and normal. Decent like definitely works better when you can manually control the camera settings. So if you can set your exposure manually, then it's a lot better because you want to be exposing in a certain way. But that's something I'll cover in another video. So I'm not going to go into that in this video. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is the video quality. So I've been filming in, it's, a bit, it's a cloudy day today. So the, the clouds have been, the sun's been going in and out of the clouds and so there's been really bright periods and then periods where it's more overcast so hopefully that gives you an idea of what the footage looks like and the exposure and the dynamic range so that you can just see how good the image quality is so yeah so i'm just walking through a shady bit at the moment just to give you an idea of what the footage looks like going in and out of the sunshine and going yeah into the into shady bits so i'm shooting in um auto exposure so this is the footage. It's not easy pushing a push chair on grass. So when the Action 3 arrived, it came later on in the day for me. So I didn't get to go out when it was daylight. So it was around sunset that I went out and I did a low light test. And I was actually really impressed with the fact that the footage didn't look bad. It looked really usable. So I've been out for quite a little while now and I just looked at the battery life and I've got 51% left. I've been filming quite a lot and filming in 4K 60, 4K 120 and the battery is doing really well. DJI claim that it will last for 160 minutes and though I haven't filmed for that long continuously, I can't say about it continuously, but on and off, clips here and there, it's definitely doing really well. So. I don't have any complaints about the battery, unlike the Action 2, which just seems to drain and just not last very long. So yeah, battery's great. And actually they do have a, a combo where you can get a battery case and a couple of extra batteries. So you're literally good to go all day. So another great thing about this, about this camera. When it comes to stabilization, there are three modes. You've got rock steady, horizon balancing, and horizon leveling. 
at the moment I'm using horizon balancing or horizon leveling horizon balancing Rocksteady and Horizon Balancing both work at 4K, but you can only use Horizon Balancing up to 4K 60, so you won't get it at 120, but you will get Rocksteady at 4K 120. And Horizon Leveling only works at 2.7K up to 60 FPS, so that's something else to bear in mind. And Horizon Balancing was actually only introduced to the Action 2 after a firmware update, so it's kind of a new thing that they've, that DJI have put into the Action cameras. So yeah, it works really well. It keeps the Horizon level at plus minus 45 degrees when you rotate your arm and uh, that little running bit that I just did that was me using horizon balancing so yeah the stabilization is pretty good if you're using it in low light though it's never gonna work it just looks really shaky and so in that respect you would need to use a gimbal but I'm gonna talk more about that again or that in another video so just something to bear in mind also, electronic stabilization doesn't work in time-lapse mode or slow motion mode. Um, so that's when you actually go and you select slow motion, not when you shoot in 4K 60 or 4K 120 or something like that. It's just when you actually go to the slow motion modes that stabilization won't work. So typical that the sun had come out just as I sit down face this way as well but anyway I'm going to give you my final thoughts on what I think about the action 3 so starting with audio I think that the audio is pretty good like I wouldn't have any problem vlogging with this and using the audio that comes from it because it does sound clear and it sounds good I will always advocate for getting an external microphone though if you can and if you can use one and you can actually use them with the Osmo Action 3 you can use any USB-C microphone and I tried it with the Rode Wireless Go 2 not the Rode Wireless Go 2 the Rode Video Mic Go 2 and it sounded really good but in terms of using filming in the wind so I had wind noise reduction on when I started filming, when I was filming most of the video yesterday and it did a good job of cutting out the wind and my voice was clear but there was still a lot of wind noise so you're not going to get away from actually completely cutting out the wind. So what I actually tested out, which I'll talk about in another video, is using a foamy wind muffler thing, windshield and also switching off wind noise reduction because that's going to give you better audio and then I also started filming in mono instead of stereo so I had it in stereo I didn't change any of my audio settings I just kept it as it was straight out of the box but definitely filming in mono putting on a wind muffler and um, doing that is just going to give you better audio in the wind the other thing is I because I filmed a lot of the footage when it was windy and I didn't have anything on apart from using the wind reduction setting on the camera in Final Cut I put I did voice isolation so I tried to get rid of as much of the wind as possible to make it clearer my voice clearer and that seemed to clear it up a little bit but again you're not going to completely eliminate the wind without actually doing something to mitigate that the other thing that you can get as well are rye, rye coat um, windshields so you can actually stick those over the microphones and that's something again that I'll talk about in another video I was really impressed with the video quality I'm really interested to see what it's going to be like when the 10-bit firmware update comes up comes out so yeah definitely going to do a video on that when that does come out but yeah video quality looks really good especially in low light I wasn't expecting it to look as good as it did it's really usable footage I would not like I said advocate using an action camera if you're mainly going to be filming in low light there are so many other cameras that you could choose rather than using an action camera so if that is your primary filming scenario then definitely don't choose an action camera but in the in the scenarios where you will need to be filming in low light just on the odd occasion then it does a pretty good job and the footage is going to be so interestingly my action 3 just overheated on me so i got a warning message to say it overheated and it stopped recording and that was it and uh finishing this video on the dji pocket 2 i wasn't going to bring it with me today which i'm glad i did normally i do take it everywhere and i just thought oh do i need to bring it and i thought do you know what? just check it in the bag it's so small it's fine so i'm glad i did bring it um so i was talking about low light and i think i said everything that i needed to say so in terms of normal color profile 
I think it actually looks pretty good. The only thing that I would say is that when going in and out of like shade or sunshine or just in various scenarios, it did look quite washed out. Whereas with D Cine Like, it didn't have the same issue. So, like I said, D Cine Like for me is my preferred uh, color profile, and I'll always use it. But there is a way to kind of get around the whole washed out look with normal, and that's something that I'll cover in another video. But otherwise, normal looks okay in most scenarios, and D Cine Like color corrects and color grades really nicely. So it just depends on which one you want to use. The quick release system is really good and it's something that I really like about the Action 3 and something that I really liked about the Action 2 as well, even though the Action 2 was not one of my favourite cameras. But the quick release system is great and the only thing that I will say is that it does take a little bit to kind of clip it, so it doesn't, it's not as good as the Action 2. So when whenever I clipped, I need to turn out of the sun, whenever I clipped the Action 2 together, so the the touchscreen module and then the camera module or just clipped it onto its actual adapter mount it just clipped seamlessly it was absolutely fine whereas with the action 3 I feel like it doesn't quite locate straight away and you kind of have to fiddle it a little bit and then clip it in but once it's clipped in it's solid it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna come off so pretty solid um but even though it's really good the one thing that you do have to remember is that if you forget your a quick release mount adapter uh, there's no way for you to mount the camera anywhere so it's definitely worth picking up a couple of them and just keeping one in your bag as a spare just in case but yeah it's just something to note in general I like it <laughs> it's really good I'm gonna keep using it between that and the Hero 11 if you haven't seen my Hero 11 video I put out a review uh, last week so do check that out but I'm going to keep using both of them and see which one I prefer because I am going to do my comparison video of both very soon. Oh, back to normal. <sighs> okay, so hopefully that video was useful. My Action 3 is back to normal now. I can use it again. But yeah, thanks Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for watching and i hope it was useful for you if it was do give a like and i've got loads of videos coming out about the action 3 different settings to use going through settings different things to make video sound better audio sound better so do subscribe if you want to see those videos if you haven't already subscribed but yeah thanks for watching and catch you next time then mount onto different things like tripod mouth 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 point two point one over one point one over two point three inch sensor.